Hello everyone, welcome to another artwork analysis. Now I've talked about paintings, I've talked about these rendered drawings, I haven't talked about the one thing a lot of artists who starts out are interested in, and that's line art. And what better way than to analyze an artist who created one of the biggest mangas in, uh, in history, and that's Tight Kubo. Now I might have mispronounced his name, bear with me, but as many would probably guess or probably have known by now, Tight Kubo is the creator of Bleach. And one thing that stood out for me even when in the last in the last arcs of the manga, it was kind of lazy, but even then one thing that always stood out with Kubo's work was his great character work. Now, I want to talk about several things here. The Q being one of the major things and why I think he is fundamentally really strong with his line work. And number two, I'll let's talk about gesture and action. I, I kind of put them together. But in essence, they're the probably similar things here. So let's talk about the cube first. Now you might look at this drawing and be like, well, this is a very simple drawing. There's not much going on compared to a lot of paintings and drawings that you've analyzed before. But sometimes these sketches say the most about how an artist is thinking. So one fundamental that I will talk about in a future theory breakdown is the idea of the cube. So what is the cube? The cube is a very convenient way to create the sense of perspective and volume. Now, a rounded object has problems. Even though our world is cons consists of a lot of rounded objects, you look at your own body as well, most of the features are rounded, quote unquote. But the problem with a rounded object is that there are infinite faces. We don't know what this, uh, this circle is doing, what it, in terms of the space that it occupies. Now, if I were to start shading, that's a different story, right? But that's really not the case in line art. And that's why the cube it's a much better shape because when we draw the cube, we know where the cube is facing at any given time. So we know this face is here, this face is here, this face is going up. So even without shading, we know where everything is facing and then just shading just kind of makes it more obvious. Stuff like that. Whoops. I drew over the layer that had the drawing, but anyways, it wouldn't be that big of a problem. We can start analyzing Kubo's line work. Now, a lot of things are going on despite the fact it's very simple. So notice how, for instance, first glance, we believe the scarf is a curve. But in actuality, when we look at the curve, it is actually a cube. So notice how there is a transition, a sharper transition than normal when he has, when the, the scarf is right there. So what happens is we end up with a shape like this. Now this is the most simplified way Kubo would have seen this, uh, this scarf. Now, he probably wouldn't have drawn it because he's an experienced artist, but he would have thought of it. And that is really the important part. And you could bring this cubic form in his face here as well. And of course you could go into the hands, very nice hands here by the way, incredible. So one, there's a, for an off topic here, one thing that I've learned is that if you notice how an artist draws hands, you'll see where his or her skill is at. And in Taikubo's case, even in the simplified form, you can see that his knowledge 
of hand very advanced and then we could go into the arm here as well so you notice how everything is broken down into a cube because again a cube is a very very easy way to create the sense of perspective and if we were to think too rounded then we end off or something again with infinite faces which has no form it doesn't convince people that it's three-dimensional especially when you are forced to do line art so i want to mention one minor point uh, i wouldn't say it's too minor but so one thing that a lot of uh, manga artists like to do in the face of just using line art is that they would draw features in order to hint at the cube without making it obvious so what i mean by this is notice this area here so on top of the fact that the sleeve here is a cubic form here look at where this is situated it's right at the edge of the cube that i drew so this is creating the sense of a cubic form very very sneaky but those subtle things make him like stand out among other artists who might not be as fundamentally sound so here as well i want to notice no make you note this part notice how the fold here just ends off at the cubic edge it's a little convenient isn't it but that's what people do and really sound uh, artists will always find these little, little things, little subtleties in order to make the work just a little bit better. And when it comes to line art, this is masterful. It's very, it's deceivingly difficult to create great line art because you are not using shading to create three dimensional form. So you must have great drawing great three-dimensionally sound drawings to make it work. Now, I want to move on into gesture and action. So I said that I always appreciated Kubel's character work. And part of it is the way he draws the gesture and action. And even in the subtle piece, there's a lot of things going on, little subtle things to create the sense of how he's looking the the attitude of this character so you notice even in again a very simplified drawing we notice that we can see that there's a character to him as if he's focusing really hard in this game so when you are playing a video game of any kind notice how everyone has different attitudes when it comes to playing the game so some people are hyper focused so in this case he created an action where he is clearly very hyper focused on the video game and he's not amused meaning he is clearly trying to beat a level or something is he's on a very hard level and he just wants to beat it and he needs to have all his focus now some other people might be happy when they're playing video game etc etc but it's important to note that attitudes matter. Like, how would this character... Now, this character in the manga, uh, Bleach, um, he's, very, he's very serious, very strict, very traditional. So, in this case, it fits his character. So, little tilt of the head here to show that he is clearly delving into the video game. That matters. Like, it's as if he's doing something like this and also the idea that he's raising up the video game console here um again some people might be holding it uh, downwards and stuff but the fact that his uh, kubo drew this character to have sort of like an intimate a very intimate connection between the video game and the uh, the player here gives again a very clear attitude when it comes and his approach to what this character is doing when he's playing a video game 
this is very subtle stuff. Like, this is why it's important to really take note. Even though we kind of gloss over these sort of actions, a lot of cases, these subtleties are the difference between a masterful character artist and somebody who is not drawing, um, who doesn't really understand the attitudes of their characters. So I want to end it off with just, again, look into every type of art, even though it might seem derivative of your own work. Manga, anime, cartoons, realism, fine arts, everything has something to teach, even when it comes to sketches. And I always say, always look into an artist's sketchbook, because the sketchbook will say a lot about how they think about their art. And in the case of Kubo's work, I've always thought his manga work was fantastic, despite Bleach being kind of mediocre by the end, but it's still something to think about, even when you, you might think the product is not something for you. Just study it. There's so many things going on, and Kubo's work is no different. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.